Yo, what's going on? I want to come on and talk about prayer. Um, seven things that would hinder a person's prayer life while we pray. And uh, why in the Bible does God want us to pray? So most of the time in the Old and New Testament, God is working with a person, a disciple, a prophet, um, a believer, a person in covenant in the Old Testament to pray to accomplish his will on the earth. Interesting quote about uh, John Wesley. It says, um, it says here, it seems that it seems that God is limited by our prayer life, that he can do nothing for humanity unless someone asks him. Why this is, I do not know. He said that in 1949. So I want to show some stuff in the Old Testament and New Testament, but prayer is working with God. There's many different types of prayer in the Bible. There's a prayer of salvation. That's something that's already uh, belongs to us. Uh, there's a prayer of faith. The prayer of faith is placing a demand like with sickness and disease on something that Jesus has already dealt with. It says in his word that Christ came to destroy the works of the devil. So we know we're not really asking him because the Bible says that if you ask anything in my name, John 14, 13, um, so that the Father may be glorified, I'll do it. Well, actually, one translation says if you demand anything in my name. So praying for the sick, Jesus... Uh, only time he asked, he was talking to the father was at Lazarus' tomb, but he said the reason why he did it was so that the people around him uh, for their sake. But most of the time, Jesus took authority over the sickness and disease. That's how you deal with that because God already taught, said in his word how you deal with that. Um, so, but there's the prayers of Ephesians that Paul prayed over the believers, that you can pray, Ephesians 1 and Ephesians 3, over believers. There's a prayer of faith, like I said, praying for the sick. There's a prayer of uh, commitment, which Brother Hagin says, 1 Peter 5, 7, you're constantly rolling and casting your cares. You're not constantly, but you do it once. But you're, I, you have to quote that scripture a lot. You're, you're casting your cares. You're committing everything to God, right? Putting it in his hand. Um, I've heard the prayer of consecration, I know Paul, when he was on the road to Damascus, he's prayed, you know, who are you, Lord, and what do you want me to do? So he called Jesus Lord, and then he says, what do you want me to do? So a lot of times I think people pray the prayer of salvation, which I think it's the same thing. The prayer of consecration and salvation should be the same thing. When a person becomes born again, they should ask the Lord, what do you want me to do at that point? And he paid a high price for you. You now belong to him. But... Um, so there, there's uh, different types of prayer, and I'm not really going to go totally into that, but I want to go into some things that Daniel prayed um, in the Old Testament, and some interesting that he saw immediate results. A lot of times when Jesus was praying for the sick, it says immediately, like Peter, Peter's uh, mother-in-law, the fever left her, and she rose and served them. A lot of times it'll say immediately, immediately in the New Testament, and then a couple times it'll say within that hour, that person was made whole. So then why do other prayers take longer sometimes? Um, but we're going to get into that. So first, I want to go over Daniel 9, 20 through 22. It's interesting that Daniel, Old Testament, uh, is praying. And watch how fast uh, this answer comes. Daniel 9, 20. Now, while I was speaking, praying, and confessing my sin and the sins of my people... Israel, and presenting my supplications before the Lord, my God, for the holy mountain of my God. Yes, while I was speaking in prayer, the man Gabriel, whom I've seen in a vision, began uh, to cause the fly swiftly, and he reached me about the time of the evening sacrifice. So he says, while I was speaking and confessing. Now it says, um, Gabriel said, at the beginning of your supplications, a command went out, and I've come to tell you. So right it says at the beginning of your supplications. So right when Daniel started praying, God commanded the angel Gabriel to go talk to him. That's amazing. That's old covenant. It, there's not uh, Jesus hadn't even come and died and rose again yet, and you're not even he wasn't even made righteous yet. Uh, so it's interesting how fast Daniel's praying. Actually, Daniel prayed the prayers of Jeremiah the prophet, and when you pray the word immediate results happen. That's why you need to know the word. So that happened right away. But let's go to chapter 10. We're going to go one chapter over. In the third year of King Cyrus, or of Cyrus, king of Persia, a message was revealed to Daniel, whose name was called Belteshazzar. The message was true, but the appointed time was long. 
and he understood the message and had understanding of the vision. Those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant food, no meat, no wine, so he's fasting and praying. Now, in the 24th month, the first month, I was by a great river. I'm going to skip down um, because he's still talking about what he's praying. Verse 10, suddenly a hand touched me, which made me tremble on my, my knees. And he said to me, O Daniel, greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak to you. Stand upright, for I have now been sent to you. While he was speaking the word, I stood trembling. So, verse 13, he said, but, uh, oh, he said, because of your words were heard, I've come because of your words. This is verse 12 and 13. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. And behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to me to help me. And then he says he left Michael to deal with the king of Persia the prince of Persia, which he's talking about a spiritual entity that it's above. So Gabriel's saying, when, you're, when you prayed, your words were heard, and I've come to you, but now the prince of Persia withstood me 21 days. And Daniel really couldn't do anything about it, but it says earlier that actually Daniel stayed um, praying before the Lord, not giving up on his prayer, and, uh, he, st- and he stuck with it for three weeks, not giving up on his confession, not giving up on what he was praying and, and fasting, which is uh, back then he there. I'm going to get into this, but there was no Jesus hadn't come and, and said, "Behold, I give you all authority." Let me let me read that because I I want you to see that because there's certain ways in the Old Testament uh, we're not going to pray. Um, Luke 10, 19, I've given you authority to trample on snakes, scorpions, and overcome all powers of the enemy, and nothing will by any means harm you. Jesus is telling the disciples this. Daniel did not have authority back then. There is nothing that he could have done but just stayed in faith, stayed praying, stayed believing, and still, three weeks, he got an answer. So it's amazing to me now that the first time he prayed an immediate answer. Andrew Walmack says this, you know, there's nothing to say that you can prove him wrong or right, but um, I think Satan saw, Satan's not omnipresent, he's not everywhere, but because Daniel's getting a revelation, he's praying, and he's getting an answer, Satan saw this, and now the prince of Persia is going to withstand him and stood bef- um, from him getting that answer. Sometimes I think people, there's demonic hindrances in the spirit that's holding things up, and people don't understand they have the authority to say, Satan, take your hands off this. Brother Hagin said when, the, when um, he was praying over money, the Lord said, command Satan to loose the finances in Jesus' name and send out angels, ministering spirits sent, that are sent forth to minister to those that will be heirs of salvation. That's what the word says about them. Minister means to wait on, to serve. So angels are caused to serve you. But the Lord told Brother Hagin, take authority, Satan's illegal. He has no right. That's why police enforce the law because that criminal is illegal, but they're still trying to do something that the law says they're not allowed to do. Same thing with the word of God. Satan is illegal. He tries to hinder your life, but he doesn't have any right to, especially if you're born again and you have a covenant with God. So, but it's interesting how Daniel just stayed in faith, stayed praying and didn't give up and he still got his answer at old covenant. But now we have a better covenant and now we have uh, authority. Jesus says, all authority I, I've given to you, go make disciples. So G, um, even the disciples came back and said, Lord, even the demons are subject to your name. And Jesus says, don't rejoice in this, but rejoice that your name's written in the Lamb's book of life. So the disciples recognize that they now have authority. Um, you know, sometimes when I'm praying over stuff, the Lord will prompt me and say, tell Satan to take his hands off of it. That's why you pray in the Spirit. Let's go to Romans 8 real quick. I want to read that. Um, <clears throat> pray in the Spirit. I don't go around binding all the time, but there sometimes it just seems like that's what you need to do over certain situations. Not over people, but a spirit sometimes behind the person or behind a situation. Um, you know, there's times our church has had a lot of equipment held up. Things have held up. Uh, we're supposed to be receiving orders. I just start going and praying in the Spirit, and it's interesting how sometimes with just even in a week or a few weeks, all that stuff gets released and shipped, even though it could be months being hindered, um, and, and you, you don't really know why, and the, the companies are giving you excuses why the products aren't in stock, they don't have them, something got messed up, and it's just Satan is trying to mess with 
uh, the work of God and the kingdom of God going forth. But I want to read this. Let's see, Romans, uh, Romans 8, 26. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know what we should pray as we ought, but the Spirit makes himself makes intercessions for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. So, sometimes you're, you're weak. You don't know what you're supposed to be praying. The, the weakness of us, and the Bible says we see through a glass darkly because of our, we're, in a, we're here on this earth in a body. And um, you don't always know what's going on. That's why it says you have infirmities or a weakness and you don't always know what to pray. You don't always know what Satan's planning. Uh, and, I don't, and I'm not saying you should always be so devil conscious because you really need to be victory conscious and overcome, overcoming conscious of the victory that Jesus has brought us. But sometimes you don't know what's happening in the realm of the spirit. Like what he was saying, Daniel didn't know that, um, I don't think he knew, that this spirit was holding up his answer. He was trying to get a revelation of, of the time to come for the words of Jeremiah for the nation of Israel. So you pray in the Holy Ghost. You pray in the Spirit. You pray in tongues. Sometimes over a situation, you say, Lord, I'm just going to direct my prayer to this situation. Or you just begin to pray in the Spirit, especially when you have something inside of you that's just groaning. Uh, you know, that something that's just not right. You don't feel right. You're just like, you know, I'm going to go pray in the Spirit. And a lot of times things would just be opened and loosed. Um, because of that. So I think one of the reasons why a lot of times people, this may be the eighth reason, they're not getting prayers answered, is they're not praying in the Holy Ghost over situations that they're not really understanding. You don't really know everything. You don't know everything about people, the way they think, what they're doing. Um, so, so praying in the Holy Ghost, that's how God bypasses your head. You don't have time on the earth to study every single thing and figure out why everything does this or does that. That's why you just pray in the Spirit, and you let the Spirit will make intercession for you. He knows the mind of God. He knows the will of God is what it says in Romans 8. That's why you, you stay praying in the Spirit. It's not something just weird that people do. I notice that when I pray in the Spirit, a lot more things happen. Uh, that's how I bought this property, was praying in the Holy Ghost. Um, many things in my life, getting into ministry, things getting aligned, uh, praying in the Holy Ghost. But I think besides that, People don't understand the authority, Luke 10, 19, praying in the Spirit, Romans 8. Let's go over a couple other things. These are seven other things. So I really could say nine, maybe 10. Um, demonic oppression, the Prince of Persia, right? Let's go um, one where Paul, 2 Corinthians 12, 17, Lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelations that were given to me, a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. So here he's saying that this is a, a spirit that's been sent to basically drive Paul crazy because of the abundance of revelations that he's getting. And it's just an hindrance, like the Prince of Persia was. So, so demonic uh, oppression can be a reason why that prayer is not getting answered. Um, the next one, so number two would be unforgiveness. Mark eleven twenty five. 25, when you stand praying, forgive. If you have aught against any, it's your Father which is in heaven may forgive you of your trespasses. So right before that, he was talking about saying to this mountain, be removed. But how do you have faith when you're standing praying and God says to him, you have aught against any person, uh, any kind of aught, anything against people? I always just continually pray for people. Even if I feel like they've done me wrong, or whatever, you just pray for them. Um, I just let God work it out. I'm not, it's not my job to fix it. And you just, you're quick to forgive because you want your prayers answered. Mark 6, unbelief. Um, he marveled because of their unbelief. Went about the villages teaching. So it says he could do no mighty work in his hometown, but yet he laid his hands on a few sick with minor ailments and healed them. Why? Their unbelief. There's no faith. They, there's no um, faith comes by hearing and, and hearing by the word of God. So if you're not hearing the word, there's no faith to actually g it pleases God. Um, by faith, we uh, the Bible talks about faith pleases God. So no faith. Let's go to the next one. Ignorance. Hosea four six. Uh, my people perish for lack of knowledge. So you have no. Faith in the word, you have 
no knowledge of the word. You don't even know it belongs to you. You don't even know what the word says about prayer, what God wrote in his word. So how do you know what to ask for? So, you know, so people perish for lack of knowledge. So that's, um, that's another one's knowledge. No, yeah, I already said no, uh, no faith. Uh, no confession or the wrong confession, Hebrews 10, 23. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For he who is faithful has promised. So that's a positive confession. Profession, same word as confession. Hold fast to the confession, confessing the word, taking scriptures of what you're believing God for, whether it's fin finances, a uh, person's salvation, or whatever. You're praying, you're confessing that word. Kenyon talks a lot about this in his book. Um, I was talking about healing the sick. So that's another one. Wrong confession. Hebrews 12, 37, by your words you'll be justified and by your words you'll be condemned or damned. So the Bible talks about words being powerful, um, being snares. Yeah, thou art snared by the words of thy mouth. Now it's talk, that's talking about a contract between you and another person, but uh, there's so many scriptures in the Bible that says, talking about a person's words, and this one says you will be justified by your words or you'll be condemned. So wrong confessions, uh, you're believing and praying for something, but then you're talking lack. You're saying you're believing God for money, but then you're telling everybody you don't have any money. So a, a wrong confession nullifies what you've been confessing. Let's see the next one. Um, prayer life doesn't work because people give up. Revelation 2.17, he, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes, I will give him some of the hidden manna to eat, and I will give him a white stone, and on the stone a new name written, which no one knows except him who receives it. So he says, he who overcomes, I will give him some of the hidden manna. There's a lot of scriptures talking about um, holding fast. He who overcomes, don't give up on uh, what you're praying for. And, and then you'll see, there's different translations to that, um, that, uh, but he's, that he's talking about though, um, not giving up, overcoming, sticking to it, and um, I could probably go more and find some different ones for that one. I'm just going to skip over it. Galatians 6, 7, do not be, be deceived. God's not mocked for whatever a man sows out, he'll reap. So another reason why people don't get their prayers answered, they have no seed in the ground. There, there's no, um, especially with finances, you cannot pray for money and take a spiritual law and not obey it. So the Bible says the whole kingdom of God works by seed time and harvest. So that's with a lot of things with, with salvation, so in the word, so in the finances, so in prayer. Uh, no seed. Galatians 6, 7. I'll add another one in here. Um, and it's, I don't know if I wrote it down. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah I did. <clears throat> Proverbs 28, 13. Whoever conceals his transgressions will not prosper, but he who confesses and forsakes them will obtain mercy. Talking about sin. I think one of the last reasons why people don't get their prayers answered, their, uh, their heart convicts them. 1 John 3, 20, wherever our heart convicts us in guilt, for God is greater than our hearts. He knows all things. Nothing is hidden from him because we are in his hands. That's telling me I need to wake up. I'm already awake. Been awake since five. So sin is another reason why people feel, have a guilty conscience against God. They don't want to come to God because they're, they're, they feel guilty when they know they can just, 1 John 1, 9, get it under the blood. But you got to walk away from sin. Sin hardens your heart. It destroys your life. What a man sows, he'll reap. The wages of sin leads to death. So everything that you're doing that's, that the Lord's telling you to make an adjustment, you're just, you're going to, it's going to keep sowing that. And eventually that, that's going to come home. That's going to grow. And when sin's full grown, full forth, full grown, it brings forth death. So you don't, um, that actually really is a big thing. A lot of people just feel guilty and they don't want to talk to God. I hear people sometimes walk into church and they say that they feel like if they walk in church, God's going to strike them dead right when they walk in. It's just ignorance, wrong. The word of God, the word will cleanse you. And so the, the best way to get out of sin is just get in the word, take those scriptures, confess them, quote them. Um, like when Jesus was tempted from Satan, he just confessed the word to him. It's, it's amazing. I've done that a lot of time um, growing up, confessing the word when things would come to me. Uh, how can a young man cleanse his way? But by taking heed to the word of God. So 
you have to be in the Word, and it actually, a lot of times, a lot of things would be worked out by you just spending time reading and meditating on the Word of God. So those are um, some hindrances. I believe there were seven there, and then I added a few more authority and praying in the Spirit. But the last thing I want to say, stay in faith, Acts 10. And I want to, this is why some types of prayer are you're dealing with people that God is using to bring that answer. Uh, I think Fred Price talks about that with when he was making a confession of money one time, that the amount of money he was making, it took God finding the person who had the money, had a surplus of that money, that was willing to obey God and give that money. And we're going to see that in Acts 10. There was a certain man named in Caesarea named Cornelius, a centurion of the Italian regiment, devout man, one that feared God in all of his house. He gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. He saw a vision about the ninth hour um, of an angel of God coming in and saying to him, Cornelius. And when he looked up, he was afraid and said, Lord, he said unto him, thy prayers and thy alms have come up before memorial before God. Now send men to Joppa, call for Simon, whose surname is Peter. So now you got uh, God and, and working with Cornelius in this prayer, but Peter's involved. So sometimes, a lot of times, your prayer is coming through people uh, that's listening to God, waiting for instruction. Um, God would tell Norval Hayes to go drive down to Atlanta and pray for one person. You drive for six, seven hours, get out, pray for one guy, get in his car and leave. So uh, sometimes it's the same thing with money. When you're believing God, uh, a lot of times it's going to be Luke uh, 6.38, it says he causes men to give unto our bosom. So you just stay in faith. You keep confessing the word, but sometimes it's going to come through a person. And then Peter had a vision and God is convincing Peter to rise, kill and eat, which means you're going to take the salvation message from the Jews to the Gentiles. So sometimes your prayer is going to be depending on another person. And that's why you just stay in faith like Daniel did. You just keep confessing. You just keep believing God. You don't get out of faith. And, um, and, you, and you'll receive a reward. So that's a couple things about prayer and hindrance of prayer. I hope you guys enjoyed that message. We may go more into that later. This is Friday. I'm off. Peace out.